It's the time of year where everybody tells you the roadmap to becoming a data engineer and the year, insert year here. So let's do one of those videos. What always bothers me is there are usually a giant list of tools and skills to learn throughout the year, but with no purpose behind them, and no focus on landing a job. Like have a resume with 50 skills will just work out for you. Also, most people are going to actually need to land a job and start getting paid before you can actually learn everything on that list. For example, to become a data engineer, you should have good understanding of programming languages and software engineering concepts. The industry standard mainly revolves around two technologies, Python and Scala. So I'm not sure Scala is that common for entry-level data engineers. It's used a lot for data applications and frameworks, but you'll likely be using those and not making them to start. The problem starting with programming is you won't know what you should be programming, so you'll probably just do coding puzzles, which is meh. SQL is the most demanding skill for the data engineer. That's why you should have a strong understanding of SQL. Knowledge of NoSQL is also required because sometimes you have to deal with unstructured data. So yeah, SQL is the most common skill for data engineers. Some positions will be pure coding language, but most will include at least some, if not tons of SQL. Most people seem to hate learning SQL after Python, so you might want to start with SQL and then move to Python. Knowledge of big data tools like Hadoop and MapReduce, Apache Spark, Apache Hive, Kafka, Apache Pig, and Scoop is required. Wow, we really ramped it up here. You need to know MapReduce, Spark, Hive, Kafka, Pig, and Scoop? These are the types of tech I'd recommend learning when you have a use case. Otherwise, you might spend a lot of time picking up skills that aren't relevant by the time you need it. Looking at you, MapReduce. Data engineers have to perform ETL operations. That's why you should be familiar with ETL tools like Informatica and Talend. Uh, ETL is probably a concept you should have been practicing with your Python back in step number two. And it's not just tools, but knowing how they work could be useful even if your role is to re-implement them in code. More and more application workloads are moving to the different cloud platforms. That's why the science engineering community must have a good understanding of these clouds. Wait, we're just learning the cloud now? I didn't realize I needed a home server room to be doing all this big data training on. Now you've gathered enough knowledge for data engineering. Now you need to learn the basics of operating systems. Again, kind of the cart before the horse on this one. I feel like installing things for the previous steps would have taught you all you need to know about your operating system. Anything beyond that doesn't seem too central to data engineering. As a data engineer, it's not compulsory to have machine learning knowledge, but having a basic understanding of ML algorithms is a plus for you. Uh, ML and data visualization are very different topics, and I'm not sure I'd combine them in a single step. Steps one through seven must be real boring to not have projects to work on. Now you have all the data engineering skills and projects, it's time to take your first steps as a data engineer, and that is making a strong resume. Sure, easy step, just make a strong resume. I can't imagine someone following that roadmap and not burning out or getting frustrated. So let's take a look at a realistic roadmap. Of course, a caveat, roadmaps are inherently kind of dumb because we all have different entry points. A data analyst will be a lot different than a software engineer, which will be different from a data scientist. But I guess we'll start from scratch and assume that you have no skills. Step one, look at data and understand where the value in data is. I realize it's not as exciting as just starting to do a coding tutorial and it's a bit abstract, but you need to understand why companies hire data engineers. What problems are they trying to solve? Who do they work with? What are the challenges they face and overcome? And a lot of this will be over your head to start, but the sooner you immerse yourself, the sooner it will make sense. Data engineers primarily build data pipelines. What is that? How do we need them? How does this help data science teams, machine learning teams, business intelligence teams? What are the difference between all those teams? What is big data versus not big data? Spend a lot of time reading articles, books, watching videos, and just consume as much information about the industry before you start learning how to get into it. Step two, build a database or warehouse. People talk about data all the time, but they don't look at a lot of raw data. Usually we see curated data sets. Spend some time looking at a variety of data, in formats from CSV to JSON, and then practice getting data into a database. Along the way, you'll have to learn SQL to set up tables and query the data. At the very least, you should have a relational database with a few connected tables. If you really get into it, you can learn data modeling for data warehouses and setting up a NoSQL database. Step three, put it on the cloud. Pick your cloud platform of choice and get your database on it. Just spend time navigating and learning the ins and outs of the platform. 
You want to do this step early so you're on a cloud platform and don't have to manage all of this on your personal computer. Step four, data visualization. Pick a data visualization tool and learn it by connecting it to your cloud data and making a variety of dashboards. You don't have to get fancy. Most data engineers rarely build reports, but I still consider it an essential skill for understanding your most common user experience. And of course, being able to build your own monitoring and logging dashboards always looks good. Step five, data security, networking, and governance. Another set of skills that isn't central to data engineering specifically, but I'd still consider it essential. You absolutely have to know how to secure your data, your cloud platform, and your cloud network. It's also a good time to start considering data governance. How would you scale things you're working on to teams of people and entire organizations? How do you know what you're doing is correct and everyone is on the same page? Step six, pipelines. Hey, we got to the actual job of a data engineer. Now with everything you've set up, you can start moving data around. Practice finding data sets and bringing them into your database. Make sure you're using a variety of sources, databases, file shares, data lakes, APIs, CSV, Excel, Parquet, JSON. You can try using ETL tools or you can go straight into code. You'll probably need to start with Python basics and best practices, but your goal should be using Python for data movement. Step seven, resume. Start looking at postings and putting together a resume. Fill it out with everything you think you'll need to get an interview, even if you're not yet convinced in your skill in something. You can even start applying and doing some interviews. Don't have high expectations yet, just get a feel for what's being asked. Step eight, fill in the gaps. So based on the resume you built, what are your gaps? If you don't feel confident in putting data visualization on the resume, go back and work on that until you are. Panic at the Python coding questions, go to leak code and suffer through it. Instead of making the resume reflect what you know, make what you know reflect what's on the resume. Step nine, bonus tools. Spark, machine learning, streaming, data modeling. At this point, you've been applying and maybe interviewing. You've maybe seen specific tech popping up in the roles that you're most interested in, maybe streaming data. This is where you can dig into one of those and pick up a more advanced skill to apply to very specific jobs that you're most interested in. Again, the roadmap is a fun exercise, but it will be really different for each individual. I really think the best route is to write your ideal resume find the gaps, and then build your personal roadmap from there. Check out this video to help you design the ideal resume and show the value you can bring to a company.